Welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Gronke. Today we're going to talk about BIPUB sub templates. Hi, before we get started, all the objects and examples you see here today are available on peopletoolstechtips.com and our GitHub repository, People Tools Tech Tips. Here are the timings to jump ahead to specific sections in our video. Subtemplates are reusable code inside of BI Publisher. Today, the scope of this video is the RTF type subtemplates. There are XSL subtemplates, but this is confined to RTF subtemplates. So, what is a subtemplate? Subtemplate is just merely reusable code inside of BI Publisher's RTF. Templates. Now, the RTF template is pretty much the Swiss Army knife of the BI Publisher world as far as creating your report templates. So this does not cover the Excel or any of the other type templates, but just RTF. Now, why would we use sub-templates? Well, the most common reason to use a sub-template is reusable headers. Think about all the reports or letters that your organization has to send out, and each one of those usually has a standard header, maybe logo, page numbers, address. For each report, you have to put that header on the report. Now, should a change happen in the header, like a logo change or something else in there, you would have to go to each one of your many reports, modify it the same, and test them out, and then re-upload and publish them into the system. Using a sub-template, we can create that header as a sub-template and include it in all our reports. That way, we only code that header once. We include it in all the reports, and when the change happens, we just change the sub-template. The sub-template with header change, and then automatically all the other reports have that new header with the sub-template. Now, we have to test them. I would go out and test them, make sure they work out okay. However, it's a lot less coding example. Another example for sub-templates is multiple branding. Here's our example. You have a state university with three schools underneath of it. So you have a common report that goes out or a letter, for all three schools. Now, what we can do is have one common state university header for that letter going out to three schools, or using information in the report, we can switch the template conditionally and have a different branding for each one of those three schools. So instead of writing three different reports the same, the only thing is different is the header, we can write one report and then conditionally call the correct header depending upon the school. Going further, we can have a conditional sections inside of our BI Publisher report. Well, what are conditional sections? Well, they can be a lot of things. They can be standard sections like address blocks or benefit blocks inside of areas, or PeopleSoft Delivered use them as part of the payroll check and advice blocks that are reusable throughout sections. Now, once you have all these sub-templates and templates together and working and testing, we're going to show you how to upload them into the PeopleSoft system and also how to include them into your projects. Now, take notice there is a bug in Orgle's BI Publisher desktop 64-bit version with the Microsoft Word template builder. That bug generates errors when you're trying to test out the sub-templates. We do have a fix for that. Go to specifically for that section that shows this fix as documented by Oracle. Let's take a quick look at the report premise for all the examples in this video. Here's a page to generate a training report on our employees. A view controls our level one scroll that brings in the employee data, which includes some basic information such as their employee ID, name, company, and department. To generate our example, we are selecting all active employees in a demo system whose employee ID ends in 001. These employees are from several different companies. Some of the employees have training data and some of the others don't. Look at the structure of the page. We have employee record at scroll level one and child training data at scroll level two. One button at the top generates sample XML to use in developing our BI publish report. The second button generates the end result report for this video using sub templates. We can see different headers depending on the employee's company. And we can see different data sections depending on if the employee has training classes to list. All our files for building and testing the BI Publisher templates will reside in the C PS reports directory of this machine. You can see here we have the sub templates at the top, our sample XML file, several RTF report templates, and a sample XDO config file. These are all available at People Tools Tech Tips and GitHub.
There is a bug in the 64-bit version of Oracle's Desktop Template Builder for MS Word that affects the local testing of BI Publisher sub templates. See Oracle Doc ID 2247221.1 for details about this empty stack exception error when testing sub templates. As per the Oracle document, the fix is to modify your local XDO config file and add additional line to the property section. Property name equals xdk-secure-io-mode is false. I have included a sample XDO config file in the sample file showing the proper placement of this fix. Before we get into creating sub-templates, let's see the basic BI publish report on this data without sub-templates. Let's load our sample XML and run the report. The report is very basic. Each employee on a new page with basic information about that employee and the employee's company. In the middle of the page is the training data table, which shows the employee's training or shows an empty table if there is no training data. Let's see a basic sub-template containing a report header. We have our logo, company name, and other information and page numbers. It's saved as an RTF document. What makes this an RTF sub-template? We have the XSL template declaration at the top in plain text, template colon PT3 under STD header in the SSL tag. Make sure there are no spaces anywhere in this tag. A sub-template document can have multiple sub-templates. Each sub-template must be declared with a unique name within that sub-template document. The sub-template is everything between the template and end template tags. There is a space between the end and template in the end template tag. Here is a report which is using our standard header sub-template for its header. How do we use a sub-template for writing a report template? First, we need to import the sub-template document so BI Publisher can access its sub-template. This import statement is telling BI Publisher where the sub-template document is on the local machine. The XSL tag import declares a file and then where that file is located. Notice the three forward slashes after the C colon, then the directory path to the sub-template directory. In my case, PS Reports is a folder underneath the root C. Then the subtemplate RTF document name. Just a note for later, we will have to modify this import tag before we upload the RTF template into PeopleTools. More on that later. Next, we call the template to insert the subtemplate into our report. The template name here is the name declared in the subtemplate's template XSL tag. This template name here is the same name as the call here. Let's run this report and see the results. Every employee is a new page. Every page has a header. The page number and date in the header is functioning correctly. Now let's take a look at conditionally calling a template. For example, we are going to call a different header template depending on the value of the company field. The XSL command we're going to use is the choose command. The choose tag works similar to the people code evaluate statement in that we're testing for multiple conditions. Here's the choose command's basic structure. Choose one or more when statements and otherwise statement to catch any other condition in our tests at an end choose tag. The first true when condition ends the choose statement execution. The follow one when and otherwise statements are not evaluated. Let's see this in actual code. Our report is going to use one of these four headers based on the value of the field company. There is a specific header for companies GBI, KAM, and KFI. All other companies will use the standard header. First, we import our subtemplate with multiple headers. This import tag is calling this sub-template, then the choose tag. Our first when tag is testing if field company equals GBI. If so, we call template PT3 under header under GBI. And here is that sub-template in our document, then the end when tag. We then go on to do this same test of the field company for KM and KFI to call their specific sub-templates. Our otherwise tag at the bottom is only executed if none of the when statements evaluated true. This otherwise calls the PT3 under STD under header subtemplate. Any company value other than GBI, KAM, or KFI will get this header. End otherwise and end choose. Let's run that and see how it works. GBI has its special header. KAM has its special header. KF1 has its special header and any other company has the generic header. Subtemplates also allow us to create conditional sections on reports. In our employee training report example, some employees have training data and others do not. If there are no child training rows, 
We want this simple section showing the message of no training. However, for an employee that does have child training rows, we want to show a table listing the employee's courses. So where is the yes no value for the child training rows coming from? Here in the XML dataset is the field first child flag. This is simpler and easier on a BI publisher render engine than traversing possible child nodes using XXL. This is an example of a parent row with at least one child training row. And this is an example of a parent row with no child training rows. Here's the document with the section subtemplates for a report. To create the subtemplate with the training table, upload or sample XML file and use BI Publisher's template builder to insert a table of child rows. Here we are designating a data level for the child training row set. Designate the fields for the table, no grouping, sort by the start date, fix the column headers. And this is our training data subtemplate. The subtemplate for our employees with no training is just a simple text line. So let's go back to the main report template and look at the code to conditionally call the subtemplates based on the report data. Again, we need to import the subtemplate before calling it. Here we're using the if and if XSL statement to call the correct subtemplate. The if and if statement is simpler than the choose when otherwise statement. The if statement tests a Boolean expression. If true, the code block is executed until the end if tag. If not true, the execution continues after the end if tag. Notice the space between the end and if words in the end if tag. Here we're using two if statements to call the correct data section subtemplate. If field first child flag equals y, then we call the train session table subtemplate. This has the training table we created. The next if statement tests for field first child flag equals n. If so, it calls the train session none subtemplate, which has our simple statement saying that this employee has no training. Since this is a yes no field, only one of these if statements can be true and the proper subtemplate is called. Let's run the report and test that out. Here's the report with everything working. We have our GBI header for a GBI employee with no training because there are no child rows. On the next page, we have a KM employee with the correct KM header. This employee does have child training rows. The correct subtemplate was called and shows the table with the training detail. Let's upload our subtemplates into people tools so we can use them in the application. First for the subtemplates. We need to upload them to the subtemplate content library in the maintain BIP subtemplates page. Here are two subtemplates already uploaded. To upload them, we need to create a new entry for the subtemplate document. We'll need this subtemplate ID for our main template, but more on that later. Set your report category ID and make sure your status is active and upload the template. Both our subtemplates are here, the multi-header template and the multi-report section template. Before we can upload our main template into PeopleSoft, we need to change the import calls. When running a BI published report from PeopleSoft, we can't import the subtemplates from the local machine. We need to import the subtemplates from the PeopleTools content library. Here is the new statement below the original. Import colon PSXMLP colon forward slash slash and then the subtemplate name from the content library. In this case, x under pt3 under standard header under mult is the header subtemplate we just added to the content library. Now remove the file import command. This report has a second import command for the conditional sections. That statement must change in the same way. The import file command changes to import colon psxmlp colon forward slash slash and the section subtemplate key here. Now we can import our report template into people tools. Here is the report definition with the changed import statements that we uploaded. Make sure all your fields are set. This is still an RTF template. Nothing different about the template tab. Upload the new template. As always, on the properties tab, ensure your PSXP use default out destination property is set to true if you want to grab the result report with people code and any special PDF sections you want. I invoked this BI Publisher report using people code in my component. For more detailed information, please see our videos on creating an XML file with people tools using the ROSET method and invoking BI Publisher with people code. Here we are importing the delivered BI Publisher and XML app packages. We are just grabbing the data ROSET from the component since it already has the data we want. This section is just running through the parent employee rows and determining if there is any data in the child training rows. 
Remember, there is always at least one row in the child row set, even if there is no data in that row. We are checking the course value for anything more than a blank space. If so, we set the first child flag equal Y for that row. Push that row set to the XML generator object to get our XML string. Write that string to our file, get our fully qualified file name to that file, and close it. Create our BIPUB report object with our new report definition. Set the data to the XML file we just created and process the report. We could use the BI Publisher methods to pop that report to a new tab, but I'm showing here how to locate that new report on the server and pop that to a new tab using the file attachment functions. The last thing we need to do is add those templates and sub-templates to a PeopleTools project for promotion. Insert definitions into the project. Change the type to BI template definitions. First, import the main report template with its BIP file definitions. Both templates and sub-templates appear in this list. So next, find both sub-templates and insert them into the project with the related BIP file definitions. These are the sub-templates. Here's the report definition and the data source. Here we can see all three templates in our project, our report definition, our three actual template files, and the data source. Now that we understand all the pieces, let's see them work together in that BI Pub sub-template report in PeopleTools again. So there we go. We have our templates and our sub-templates. We know how to create them. We know how to directly put the sub-templates in our reports and also how to use that conditional logic to get the right sub-template in report as per the data in that report. We also know how to upload them into PeopleTools and promote them forward into our production. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel, and we'll see you next time here on PeopleTools Tech Tips.